Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Marketing Minute. I'm your host, Adam Small. And today we are talking about RPAC. And before we get into that, I'm going to turn us over to one of our guests who's going to do our RPAC disclaimer to make sure that we cover all of our bases. Contributions to RPAC are not deductible for income tax purposes. Contributions to RPAC are voluntary and are used for political purposes. You may contribute more or less than the suggested amount. You may refuse to contribute without reprisal and the National Association of Realtors or any of its state associations or local boards will not favor or disfavor any member because of the amount contributed. All right, and now that we've got our disclaimers out of the way, we're going to get the show started. This is the Real Estate Marketing Minute, the show dedicated to helping real estate agents get to the next level of success. Featuring experts on topics that agents want to know about and providing tips for marketing smarter so that you can create a brand that attracts more clients and more referrals. The Real Estate Marketing Minute podcast is brought to you by Agent Sauce, the leading real estate marketing platform for high performing agents. This is the Real Estate Marketing Minute. Hello and welcome to the Real Estate Marketing Minute. I'm your host, Adam Small. And today we have in the studio a couple of guests, actually three guests, and we are going to be talking about RPAC. Our first guest is Lacey Everett, who is the Director of Political Affairs and Engagement. And our next guest is Zach Miller, who is a Northside MyBoard RPAC trustee, MyBoard being the Board of Realtors here in Indianapolis. And then we have Steve Thompson, who is an RPAC trustee vice chair. Hi, guys. How are you today? Hey, Good. Doing great. Thanks. Great, great. Thank you so much for joining us. Really excited about this podcast. RPAC is uh, something that I, I think a lot of agents know about, but not necessarily have a lot of great information on unless they're involved with you guys. Um, you know, but before we get started, why don't we just kind of start with uh, Steve, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll just kind of go down the line here. Yeah, so my name is Steve Thompson. Uh, my primary market is Madison County, northeast of Indianapolis, and I've been in real estate for about five years, and I've been on the RPAC trustee board uh, with our local association for two years now. Great, great. And Lacey? Yeah, uh, Lacey Everett. So I work here at our local association of my board realtor association, and I have been part of this group for nine years, um, working specifically in government and community relations for five years. And prior to that, have some political experience at the uh, local mayoral level and have run some campaigns. So government's kind of in my blood, I would say. Lucky you. Yeah, it's exciting <laughs> for me. All right, and Zach. Yeah, um, my name is Zach Miller. Um, I've been involved in the industry uh, since 2006, started in new home construction uh, in 2011, became an independent licensed realtor. Um, mm -hmm. And then through our local association's Leadership Academy is how I learned a little bit more about RPAC and, and, and our political adv advocacy. Um, and, and since then, I have been in, involved in one way or the other with, with RPAC and, and now serving as my first year as a, as a trustee. Great, great. So, um, you know, a lot of agents have at least heard of RPAC. They, you know, it's kind of in the background at the very least for them. You know, but for those that are just starting out or for people that are thinking about getting into uh, the real estate industry, work, working as an agent, can we talk about what RPAC is? Um, and what it starts for, how it got started. Yeah, I can I can start off on this. Um, so our National Association of Realtors is the largest trade organization in America, and it's actually the only advocacy group that fights exclusively for home ownership and property rights and real estate investment. So our PAC is the Realtor Political Action Committee, and that's what we named the funding mechanism of that advocacy work. Right. So we have a PAC, we raise funds, um, and as the Realtor Party, which is what we like to call it because it is very bipartisan, we work to, um, to leverage each other as real estate agents and association staff to um, promote public policy and advance candidates that are that are supportive of our issues of home ownership issues and real estate issues. So it's really about home ownership as opposed yeah. to a political party one way or the other, right? Absolutely. And you know, and the reason I ask is because anytime you hear the word political, mm -hmm. you know, people tend to think one party or the other, you know, because we're pretty much a two party system here in, in the U.S. So you are in no way or shape or form affiliated with one or the other, right? I would say, yeah, that's that's correct. Um, if you look uh, from a national statistic level that um, our, our, our endorsements and, and support is really 
split down the middle 50 50 between uh republicans and democrats so so as we are even here on the local level as we are choosing to make the endorsements um we don't look at political party we focus specifically on home ownership issues so it's really the realtor party which is what i believe you said right Lacey? Yeah, yeah absolutely yeah so that's great to hear uh, so what are some of the goals of our pack um at the local state and even national level so whether it's City Hall, the State House, or the U.S. Capitol, our mission remains to uh, speak on behalf of the Realtor Party with one voice and advance candidates and public policies that uphold private property rights, real property ownership, uh, strong communities, and a vibrant business environment. Mm -hmm. uh, in recent years, local level activities have increased where uh, realtors have gained political clout through our legislative victories in every corner of the country, um, even in Indiana and here locally uh, with our organization, we've had tremendous um, success with uh, gaining a voice on behalf of property owners right? Um, and advocating for those uh, public policies that um, benefit property ownership. So you guys don't mind if I ask what some of the local wins you might have had are? Absolutely. We're happy to share that. So some of this, um, some of these issues are on both the state and the local level because we work really, we work really well with our state association on issues that are coming up at the state house. But then locally, when we're in city council uh, offices, we're working with mayors on all types of issues that are going to impact real estate, but also homeowners. We are talking about property taxes, being able to cap those so that they're. Um, you know, predictable amount of money that right. homeowners will have and have the ability to budget for them instead of the kind of flux that they were experiencing prior to Well, that. I remember a few years back here in, uh, on the north side of Indianapolis, there was a big thing because they, they went through and they basically reevaluated all the property yeah. in, in the homes. And some people were saying, well, I got to sell because I can't afford the property tax anymore. Yes. So ultimately, when it comes to property taxes, we want our homeowners to have the ability to really predict what that cost is going to be and have peace of mind that that's not going to change significantly. They have to be able to budget. They have to be able to plan accordingly. And when they're looking at a property to buy or when they're getting ready to sell, they need to, to have kind of a good baseline of what that's going to look like for them so they can plan. Right. Um, beyond that, oh my goodness, there's so many different issues. Um, we have been working really regularly on short-term rental regulations, on uh, landlord issues. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we get involved in those topics is because as private property owners, you have certain um, rights that you need to have people standing up for. But at the same time, you also are responsible. Right. And so we have to kind of find that that balance with local government, which is trying to really keep our landlords and property owners accountable. But at the same time, you can you can easily cross that line and, and you know, it's undue, undue restrictions and right. high high fees. Placing an undue burden on people that are trying to rent their properties and stuff like that is what you're yeah. talking about, right? So trying to maintain that balance between regulation and doing right, at, but not overly burdensome so that it, it makes it hard to... to rent or do whatever with your property, right? Absolutely. Right. And that really just lends to why the relationship building is so important on all levels of government and why we as an association, as an advocacy arm are so successful because we don't just endorse candidates, but we're building relationships. The real work happens after that check is cut right. and those people get elected. Then we have to build that up so that we can have those conversations. And sometimes they're tough conversations. Right, right. Absolutely. So um, so 2019 is a kind of a big milestone for our pack. You guys have been, you know, around for 50 years now. What are some of the biggest successes our pack has had over the years? Yeah. So 2019 is a big milestone for our pack. So 50th anniversary of our pack overall, um, the entire time what we've been in place, we've been a member led organization, uh, upon facing growing negative impacts of legislation on real estate businesses and homeowners, we decided 50 years ago that it was time to take action. Uh, the National Association of Realtors hired its first lobbyist in 73, and RPAC was formed and launched in 69 and has since supported candidates of any party that understand and champion real estate issues. We've experienced successes at all levels of government, uh, with, from federal tax reform to national flood insurance and sales tax on commission, uh, and even as low as preventing ordinances uh, on illegal signs. RPAC and the Realtor Party has become a force to be reckoned with, and we're, we're very proud of it. Great, great. So uh, when an agent contributes, how are those contributions used on both a local and a national level? Um, and 
as a follow up to that, you know, can an agent say, Hey, this is how I want this contribution used? Sure. No, that's, that's a, that's a great question. A hundred percent of the investments to the PAC are used to support uh, candidates on the local state and, fe- and federal level um, that, that do understand and support our issues as, as, as realtors and, mm-hmm. and what we advocate for. On each level, RPAC endorsements and investments are decided upon by a board of trustees of which Steve and I are, are on the board of trustees here on the local level. And those boards are made up of both realtor members and affiliate members. So mm-hmm. um, what you know, whether they're with a, a lender or, or a title company, they, right. they, they also have a seat um, at, at the table. Um, but due to, due to campaign finance laws, um, investors at the local and state levels, they can't specifically um, or specify a, a candidate that, that those funds go to. Um, however, on the national level, um, there is something called the president circle um, that uh, a member can invest in and have the ability to um, to allocate a certain amount to a congressional candidate of their choice. Oh, nice, nice. So there is some level of control over where their funds go. And, and, you know, but at the same time, you know, it, it's also decided by a board, not, not a board of realtors, but the board of the RPAC group locally. Correct. correct? Yeah. Yep. Of the trustees. Yes. Right. Right. And those, those trustees are realtor members. So this is uh, organized by the association staff, but we are not voting members. It is our realtors and our affiliate members that sit on that trustee board and make those decisions. So there, are, there's control in that way. And they also, as trustees, really represent the rest of their colleagues, so are available to their colleagues to discuss issues, to um, talk about candidates that might be running for office, and get even more information than we would at the interview uh, right. table. So, so from your perspective, you're, you're a supporting group, but you, you're not right. a directing group per se. Uh, correct. So we support the process, the endorsement process. And from that point on, once an, a candidate has been elected to office, we maintain that relationship when mm-hmm. we do a lot of the lobbying work at that point. Right. Um, we bring our realtors along with us. They're the subject matter experts on how this impacts them and their clients. Right. But we, we really truly you got to have somebody that's doing this full time because legislation is there's pages deep. You know, even even the, the, the legislators can't keep up with they it. They can't. Right? No. It, so. How many of them sit at the table and say they haven't read anything? Exactly, <laughs> it exactly. happens. It so. happens. So uh, how does our PAC impact the real estate agent, you know, directly, you know, and, and you know, why do why should they support our PAC? So there's there's no doubt that our primary concern is to protect the rights of property owners locally at the state level and even nationally. But what we know and what oh any realtor should should hopefully hold to be true is that the biggest advantage that a property owner has when you're buying or selling a property is the opportunity to work with a realtor right so one of the biggest things that we do as part of our pack and realtor realtor party is advocate for rights on behalf of the realtors as well so not only is it important for us to be watching the backs of property owners but we're also watching the backs of realtors as well so like when i was talking about sign ordinances that's something Mm -hmm. that it uh, can be very, very minuscule to most people, but that can have a major impact on the business of a realtor. If you're not able to put signs out where you want to because the municipality has regulated that, then that can have a, a huge impact on you, your business, and eventually your your checkbook. Right, right. I, and, you know, along those lines, I was just reading where, um, you know, there was at one point a, a proposal for a $25 per sign permit fee. And, you know, if you're putting out a lot you're working with a lot of listings that could add up after a while Absolutely. i mean that's a lot of money you know directly out of the agent's pocket so that's something where you guys step in and advocate to kind of help prevent it from being having a negative impact on on the realtor themselves right exactly mm-hmm. yeah little things like that that 25 dollars fee adds up really quickly and any any financial contribution you make to the realtors uh our pack can have a, a huge financial benefit to you down the road when they're looking out for interest for you like that right the other biggest thing is uh, one of the major issues that we've always had a, a huge uh, stance against is uh, taxes on services. Mm-hmm. So imagine if someone had to pay pr- uh, had to pay sales tax on your commission as a as an agent. Right. Uh, that would have a huge financial detriment to you and your business, especially when you're talking with such large transaction. You know, for a lot of people, it's the largest transaction of their life. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, so that those are great reasons why a, an agent should support our pack, but. Don't do some of the other dues that they have to pay along the way, you know, because there's NAR dues, there's local dues, state dues. Does any of that go toward 
RPAC or toward these sorts of things? Maybe not RPAC directly, but toward these sort this sort of lobbying? Ultimately, uh, your dues do not go toward the endorsements that RPAC make on behalf of candidates. They, they are by law voluntary contributions, aren't covered by your regular dues at all. Some of the activity of the advocacy staff of your associations do get covered in, in the dues, just like everybody else on staff. Mm -hmm. But the lobbying efforts and those candidate endorsements are voluntary. They're made by colleagues. Uh, they're made by realtors that have basically learned and know the the importance of being at the table okay so so there's a very clear line there as to what you can and can't do with the dues because of the campaign and political um finance laws right absolutely you have to volunteer to uh invest your money in this process right so so that's that's actually a really good thing you know because i i would hate the thought of donating to somebody that i just didn't support right Understood. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the key, too, is it's an educational process. We really don't want people to invest without truly knowing what this goes toward and why it impacts them, even right. if you're not always on the same side of a of an issue or you might not agree 100 percent with a candidate. I think you could look inwardly and know even on a personal level, you probably don't vote for somebody that you agree with 100 percent. Right. But our effort is, uh, you know, intended to make sure that people are aware and it's a very transparent process that they're um, opting to be a part of. Great. great. And, and as we said before as well, I just want to kind of jump in there is that whenever we do talk with candidates and, and make decisions on investing in them and endorsing them, mm -hmm. we look specifically at realtor and homeowner issues and 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 that's that they may have they may have other stances on on other issues that are right. outside of of that right but but here at RPAC, we're going to ask them specifically about where they stand on on homeowner issues right you're, you're digging into the homeowner side of things it's the realtor party as opposed to whatever other party it may be exactly right? exactly so so beyond making a, a financial contribution uh how could an agent get involved and help make a difference all right so there's three things our mantra we like to use is this vote act invest so the most important thing you can do as a realtor and more so as a citizen of the United States is vote in every election. Get educated on the candidates that you have the opportunity to select from and look at the ones that have received an endorsement from your colleagues and then decide for yourself whether or not you choose to support them. The second thing that act is there's a lot of issues that come up, whether it be uh, national flood insurance or anything else. NAR sends out calls to action that are very quick and very effective and very easy for you to do. You can sign up for those Realtor Party Alerts by texting REALTORS, in all caps, to 30644. REALTORS to 30644. But just keep in mind that if you are texting, message and data rates do apply to that. And then finally, that third thing is invest. Uh, if you truly believe in what we're doing and, and that your your business is very valuable to the economy and that uh, property sales is the largest driver of our economy, then you have to believe in this and what we do. And, and the biggest thing you can do is invest. So RPAC pr protects your profession and the clients you serve. And any any involvement in that organization determines how well we can shape and define the size, scope, and success of our industry. This is not a time to sit back and let your colleagues cover the cost for you. If you truly believe in what we're doing as realtors and as an organization, you need to get involved. So Zach, you actually mentioned earlier that on the board of trustees, there were affiliate uh, members like yes. mortgage and title and that sort of stuff representation. Yes. So um, what about them? What is their role in RPAC and you know, how did they get involved? Sure. Their their role um, when it comes to the board of trustees for our pack is no different than a realtor members. Um, they are they're looking out for the exact same things that, that we are as realtors. They know our side of the business, obviously, as, as as on the transaction side, they know what all goes into a real estate transaction. Then they also know what we look for right. uh, for the homeowners. So um, so so really their position here on the on the board of trustees is no different than ours. They know exactly the issues that we're looking out for. They ask the right questions and, and help us make those endorsements. And, and in large part because they they have a vested interest as much as an agent or a homeowner does for that matter, right? Absolutely, yeah. They're they're part of the industry, you know, just just like everyone Locked else, up, right? Yeah, just like we all are. Exactly. So yeah. And I would add to that that you know when it comes to some of the the ordinances and laws that we're up against at times, sales tax on services, uh, that's going to impact them as well. Right. So it's not just realtors that might be impacted in their direct business, but all of our affiliated. Uh, companies too. right and so how, how would an, an affiliate uh, get involved with our pack 
they're they're they are able to invest in in our pack just just like any any realtor member uh-huh. um it is it is available to them to be involved um and like i said there is a seat um on our local board of trustees right. that is that is representative of of affiliates um so anytime that that seat becomes available anyone uh who's an affiliate member is always welcome to run for that seat as well all right guys so it's been a great interview so far um before we wrap up uh, anything else that an agent should know about our pack or any misconceptions or other initiatives you'd like to put out there before we end Steve yeah the, the one thing I would want to get across is that sometimes I, I talk to other realtor members and they're concerned that whether we say it is or not that there is some kind of bias toward one party or another or one issue or another and my favorite thing that I hear about our pack and about the realtor party is that it, it is just that it's not one political affiliation or another we're truly concerned about realtor issues. Right. And if you get a mailer or you get a call to action or you get an email and it's it's favoring one candidate over another, favoring, you know, the opponent to the your your favorite candidate, keep in mind that we're not focused on overall anything. What we're focused on is who's who we believe is the best candidate to support property rights and realtor issues. Great, great. Lacey? I've got two things that I want to make sure that we leave with. Um, One thing is a mantra, another mantra that we use on the regular. um, And it's, it's, if you're not at the table, you could easily be on the menu. So there's a real importance (laughs) to being at the table, having these discussions with our elected officials. Um, The other thing that's probably not as widely known, and yet we've hit on the bipartisan side of things, um, we're actually the most bipartisan pack in the country. So if you look at that split nationally, it is almost completely down the middle. And while one state or one local organization may look to be favoring one side or the other, you go a couple cities over or a state over, and you're going to see a different landscape. So right. it's these issues are truly on both sides of the aisle, and we also have to participate on both sides of the aisle. So we do not make enemies. Right. We are friends with local government, state government, and national government. It is the most effective way to do business. Great. And Zach? Yeah, I, I would say um, something that I think that a lot of people don't know that was most eye-opening for me when I decided to get involved in, in RPAC was um, – was actually the significance uh, in in Washington. Um, as Lacey said earlier, the National Association of Realtors is the largest trade organization in America, mm-hmm. and we are on, on on the political action side. We are one of the largest lobbying groups in right. America. So when we go out to D.C., we go out every May to to have our time to lobby. Right. Um, they know that we're there, and and they essentially got to kind of roll out the red carpet for us, and they and they make time to to speak with us. Um, about our issues your, your congressman and senators is Co- you're speaking congressman of, right? and senators and actually even this year the president so wow. um you know i mean we um we we talk from every level from on the local level to, to mayors all the way up to to when we have the ear of the oval office you know no matter who's in that office at at any given year when they're listening to you you're making a, a true impact and you and and you are um you are relevant right right great so uh wow that's a really really good one to take away that that your local efforts can in fact reach on a national level there that's that's very impressive great to hear all right guys thank you so much for joining us it's been a great interview really enjoyed it learned a lot about our pack today and to our listeners thanks for listening to the real estate marketing minute if you like what you hear don't forget to like and or subscribe to the podcast we'll see you next time thanks for listening to the real estate marketing minute make sure you don't miss an episode Subscribe now. Subscribe now. Want to take your real estate career to the next level? Check out agentsauce.com. Until next time.